when you take out a diaphragm and you have just a standard pin bearing without the insert in it, the first thing I would do, I would take your metering pin and put it in the center and see if you got any slosh in here. Because this, this hole, it starts getting egg shaped because this is a stainless steel material. This is just brass. This is softer. And with the valve opening and closing a lot during the day, this will wear an egg shaped into the pin bearing. And what happens is our valves, we push water through the center of our diaphragm assembly. And when it goes through the pin bearing, because it comes up through here, it hits the metering pin and on and in the valve when it's open, we actually cre start creating a turbulence because that water is wrapping around the, uh, the metering pin. This is a serration. So what happens is we start putting a turbulence on top of the diaphragm and we actually will clean, will clean on top of the diaphragm but also in here in the bonnet area. So it's a continuously self-cleaning valve. Now the other part of this is the fact that when the valve closes down, we're pushing water all the way on this top of this area, but we're also pushing water back through the center of the of the diaphragm assembly. So what happens is, is that as that water pushes down, it goes the opposite way. And so instead of water coming up this way, it starts going the opposite way. And we push water through the center of the, the pin bearing. That's how we get our closing speed. A Griswold valve will never slam shut. No, it takes a while. It, it's a very slow closing valve. And the reason it is, is because we push water through the center of our diaphragm. We're the only passive. manufacturer. We state in writing in our, in our specification literature, the valve will not close any faster than five seconds. Five seconds? Five seconds. Now it'll close slower than that, but five seconds will be the fastest it'll close. And so it's a shh. What is the Yeah, then it slows down completely. Yeah. And you can adjust a little bit of that with the flow control handle. So close it more faster or no no. It's still gonna it's still it's still it's gonna still close gonna slow. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because we don't create any water hammer when our valves shut, and that's why a lot of people use our valves. Okay. Um, so we've actually made. Okay, this is a DWS dash PRV valve. Is this what you were talking about, pressure regulator? Yeah. Okay. We've made a couple. We've made a couple um, enhancements to the block assembly. Now, underneath the thread, before it threads into the bonnet, we actually have a swivel. So this moves. Right. Okay? No leak. No leaks. Okay. And um, we, we changed this piece That's right fine. here on the regulator. And we took, we got away from the piston. And we now have a diaphragm in here. Um, I might have. I might oh, have a. Do I have them inside the uh, inside oh, the yeah. regulator? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's right here. Okay. Is this pressure regulator? Yes. This is a swivel. Okay. And this is the new regulator. Okay. So what we did when we when we changed this, we actually made the porch inside the block assembly a little bigger, so this flows more water. But what this part was is that now instead of having that, now you've got a diaphragm. That's a diaphragm. So this metering pin is actually bigger. It's still press fit in. But now you're going to get a little bit more accuracy when you dial in your downstream pressure. Because this this actually is totally different than having that just oh, that okay. disc in there. Same spring inside here. So, and we don't paint them anymore. It looks exactly like this. It has a ridge here. But this is the biggest enhancement. So instead of this dialing in directly on top of the bonnet, this goes on. 
So when you're retrofitting out in the field, what you do, because you can you can retrofit this out in the field, you just unscrew your your, uh, your solenoid. And then what you have to do though is you have to take all this apart. So it's right in. What is the price? Um what for the for this assembly? Yes. I don't know. I wanna say it's two hundred and twenty five bucks. Oh okay. List price. So this now you still have to put the O ring in here. Okay. So this this threads right in. No basket? No. No, you have to you have you have to put a, an O ring in there. Oh. And this comes with an O ring. So then you just put it to where you want it, and then what you would do is you put it back together again. With your So now, when you, and you always will take a wrench and tighten this down, is hand tighten it good tight. Because yeah. if you don't, what will happen is it will swivel and that bottom piece will come off the seat disc and it will cause the valve to not open or close. Yeah. You have to tighten it down. That's why we have this ridge on this. So that's why I always encourage you, if you're going to retrofit on this, on the uh, pressure regulator side for the DWS, that, because right now, I mean, see it's swiveling on the base, but this, this needs to just be a little tighter. Oh. But see how that swivels? Right. And this doesn't move. And that's new for us. It's a new enhancement. 